Friends, it is Tuesday, June 22nd, and we have a, a famous verse today from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. You may remember that um, John is addressing the church at Laodicea, and I, in my introduction yesterday, I didn't tell you much about that city. I'm going to fill in that gap today and kind of explain a little bit about what it was like to live in Laodicea. You may remember that there are seven churches that are addressed by John. This is the final church. It's a semicircle. It's as if a rider or a walker was going to carry this letter, starting in Ephesus, about a hundred miles in a, in a circle. And the final place was going to be Laodicea. <clears throat> Laodicea, this, this is what uh, John says to the church at Laodicea. He has said that this word comes from the one who, who is the faithful and true witness, the origin of creation. Uh, the universe is amen, the reliable one. And here is the verse. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. Sort of mysterious, that language, isn't it? Well, let's see if we can find out about it. Laodicea had uh, a couple of sister cities. And one was Colossae that was, that was about 10 miles away. And uh, it was in the same river valley, the Lycus River Valley. Um, and then it had another sister city called Heropolis. Polis means city. Hyra Polis. And that was uh, just across the Lycus River. So you could see Heropolis from uh, the city of Laodicea. And in fact, it was a striking viewpoint because there, there was an escarpment that rose up about 300 feet. That's, that is a high escarpment. And there were water that tumbled over it. And it wasn't, ordinary, it wasn't an ordinary river that was coming over it. It was a hot spring-driven water that came over this escarpment. And this water was uh, sulfur-based. It had um, also um, a lot of of calcium carbonate in it. Calcium carbonate is, you know, when you see a white residue, calcium carbonate often in nature, and that's what was happening. You had this this hot water that was flowing over this escarpment, very spectacular, kind of a waterfall situation. And underneath that, you had this white calcium carbonate. And you also had, if you've ever smelt sulfur, have you ever smelt sulfur? Sulfur has a, a pungent odor. Sometimes people would visit Hierapolis and you know, they would see this water and they'd scoop it up in a cup and, and drink it and not realizing it was going to be warm or maybe even hot, depending how close it was to the, the hot springs. And it was also going to taste terrible. So, interesting. Um, when we put all this together, some of those that have interpreted these verses have said, well, you've got this water that's smelly and it's insipid to drink. And as it comes over this escarpment, you know, it's lost most of its heat. It's neither, it's neither hot nor cold, kind of tepid and lukewarm. And that what is being criticized here is a church that has no passion. In fact, in English, the word Laodicean, uh, if someone is described as Laodicean as an adverb, that means someone who has lost their passion, who doesn't have any enthusiasm about a cause or about uh, a problem. And so, by, by this interpretation, this, this church has, has lost its, its, its fire. And um, it's a very serious thing when um, you're connected to your faith, but you just are kind of indifferent about the results of your life, about the character of your life, about whether other people discover the faith, if you think of the beginning of the book of Acts, you see the tremendous enthusiasm, the, the, the enthusiasm they had for being together, for warmth and for fellowship, for friendship. The enthusiasm they had for other people coming to faith, even if that required the church to make a lot of adjustments, even if people from different languages and backgrounds and economic classes, non-Jews and others were coming, they were enthusiastic about the growth of the church. And they were enthusiastic about even uh, the, even seeing the problems that arose because they realized that through the problems, like for instance, the opposition they had in Jerusalem, that the church was being dispersed and that they were they were in effect being uh, forced to, to do what Jesus had wanted them to do, which is to reach out to people in different areas and different places. And so 
there was a great enthusiasm in the early church. It's a terrible thing to lose your passion. As parents, this week I, I'm looking at some of these verses from the standpoint of parents. Remember that a good parent is uh, honest and truthful. This is a pretty tough verse. This is the only one of the seven uh, letters where there's no positive thing said before the tough thing. And he goes right into the tough thing. I know your works. You're, no, you're not hot or cold. You're not passionate. And um, a good father is honest about his children's uh, vices as well as their virtues uh, and wants to encourage this sort of passion in their children, people who are engaged, who are all in with faith and with life. Um, now, it's interesting. With Bible verses, there's often a tremendous depth. And so, a number of years ago, two uh, scholars, one called M.J. Rudwick and the other called E.M. Green, offered a, a second view of the historical background to this verse. And I want to give you that as well. So, Laodicea could mean lukewarm, but it has a second possibility. It could be not the uh, emotional passion and commitment of the church is being called into question. It could be their actual effectiveness, their impact of their ministry. And that's because there may be a contrast between these two kinds of waters. It's interesting, the, uh, the, the, the waters of the church at Hierapolis were warm. And you know, with warm waters, whether it's in Iceland or it's um, hot springs in the United States, that tends to be viewed as medicinal, just like a hot tub is a soothing place. People find these areas where there are hot spots, the natural uh, areas where the Earth's crust is thinner, and so volcanic uh, energy is coming up and warming any water that's there. Sometimes it even creates a warm geyser. I've been in Iceland, and there are these hot, natural hot spots where you have to be careful they're not too hot, but in some of them you can get in like it's a hot tub and just have a soothing experience. So people would come to areas like that for their healing power, the healing power of, of a hot, hot tub experience. And then on the other hand, um, the other type of water nearby was the waters at Colossae, and they were famous for having cold, pure mountain water, like a cold, pure mountain stream like we would have in some of our Rocky Mountains. And so, in effect, this was a way through these symbols of these two kinds of water with uh, the church in Laodicea in between uh, as not having the cold, refreshing character of, of a church that brought refreshment to the world and challenge and truth, or on the other hand, being a church that brought healing and brought comfort to the world and help people deal with the things that were painful in their lives. Um, and then it's interesting in this, the remainder of verse 16, we hear, I know your works, you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were because you are lukewarm and not hot or cold. I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. It's a vivid picture. It's the picture of, you know, you, uh, you are expecting to, to take a bite of food or drink of something that is going to be wonderful and when you get it into your mouth it's it's bitter and you you spit it out right away you spew it out um, good fathers and families are are not afraid of having consequences when uh, the people that they're entrusted to care for and love and and mentor are off track and so this is a warning that's pretty clear uh, you know you you can't be my disciple and be lukewarm why because Jesus himself is not a lukewarm guy. He's a passionate God who, who is engaged with people's development, who wants them to connect with, with, with him and with his Father, who wants to see them grow through the work of the Holy Spirit, who wants to see them serve, wants to see them become creatures fit for heaven. He sees their potential, and he's not going to settle for, for anything less than achieving it. And so he's a passionate kind of person. Uh, Jesus said this, and this is where I want to close today on, on Tuesday with our devotional. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser, the vine grower, the, the horticulturalist. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that he does, he prunes. Interesting. He prunes it that it may bear more fruit. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.